Hi there guys, this is Alan recording a Guilds of Ravnica draft. Um, Guilds of Ravnica is going to rotate in a couple of hours, so I decided to just um, do a draft before it um, expires, and uh, yeah, let's go. Pick one, pack one. Wow, Ral is it Viceroy is definitely a pick one, pack one. Um, it does kind of commit us towards is it. Um, it's still splashable. I can see it being splashable in the mirror. Um, but for the most part, you do want to build around. You do want to light instant sorceries in the graveyard or in exile. Um, so you can keep procking its ability, but it's definitely the pick one pack one here. Whatever great cards are um, in this set, in this pack, I mean, Discovery Dispersal is a nice cantrip. Great way to surveil for two and draw a card. Um, just very efficient. Um, very um, open towards black or blue. Can be playing Golgari, is it in the mirror. But um, yeah, um, there's also the recurrent, um, great removal spell, good in Boros and is it. Um, but for the most part, even though these two choices are the most safest, I just like the route is advice, Roy. Maybe you can try to force draft into is it. Um, it might not happen, but it, I can still see myself splashing this in the mirror. And um, just using the minus effect or the plus effect is just very powerful by itself. So it's definitely going to be Raul is Vice Roy here. Um, I don't think I'm missing any, out on anything. These two cards are good and flexible, but yeah, Raul is just at a much higher power level and ceiling than uh, the other two cards. So I'm just going to pick it up here. Follow up with Rao. Wow, we do have Mermaid Mystic. Um, just does just fits well in the Izzet build, I guess. You just, I guess now if we pick up Mermaid Mystic, we have to prioritize a lot more instances and sorceries um, to keep procking the effect by making lots of blue um, bird creature tokens. And uh, goes well with Rao. There's also um, Affection Indrake. Again, that's in green. It doesn't really match for our first pick, but it's still a great card. Golgari Fine Broker is excellent in Golgari, of course. Healer's Hawk is a great Boros card. In Selesnya is also decent, but it, it's just having a Mentor trigger on just a 2-2 Flying Lifelink can be really uh, detrimental for the opponent. There's also Luminous Bonds. We could attempt to splash for if Murmuring Mystic wasn't in this pack. I mean, I wouldn't mind picking up a Deep Disdainful Stroke as well if Murmuring Mystic was in, in this pack. Skynet Legionnaire is also a really good Boros card, um, but the pick here has to be Murray Mystic. I can't imagine anything else. So, um, yep. Blue's going to be our main colors. Um, is it's going to be something we're trying to force here? Definitely Clarion. Um, I can see myself splashing this in the control is it archetype. The reason why it's not so good in Boros and Selesnya is because um, those are the guilds that tend to make a lot of creatures and go wide. And the choose one, the first effect, um, just. It's kind of a nombo if you're playing lots of creatures because you don't want to destroy your own board. The second part, the part that you can gain lifelink, is kind of irrelevant. You're really just looking to destroy a lot of creatures with this card in the battlefield. And um, for this, it's a consideration. Um, great, excellent splash card for an is it control deck. And I can see myself maybe taking it. There's also um, Electro Stack Field. Um, I haven't been impressed by his card. Sure, it's a fine tube drop. Two drop blocker. It can deal a little bit of damage to the opponent, but at the end of the day, it's just really just a wall. Um, I can see this in a, again in an is it deck with lots of instances and sorceries where you can kind of ping the opponent just a little bit and leave up a blocker behind. But um, I, this card is not really a good card for being aggressive. It's more of a control build. It might be what we're going to pick up. But I'm looking at the Deafening Clarion as maybe um, a better choice to splash for. Um, so Dazzling Lights is decent. Um, I have been kind of impressed by his card. I mean, it's a one mana instant speed that surveils for two. Um, sure, you want you would rather just have a removal spell, but um, having this out one mana and the ability to surveil for two, um, from my experience, has just um, just been an overperformer, to be honest. Um, there's several strands which we can't play. Um, Rise and Lurcher, which doesn't go well for two cards. So it's these three picks here. Um, Electro Stag Field does make our deck a lot. I mean, doesn't require us to do a splash for Death and Clarion, but Death and Clarion is definitely a lot, very powerful. can have a ch game changing effect, just the, dam the ability to deal 3 damage to everything could set us up for a nice, um, is it 
um, control deck. Uh, Deffy would prefer it over Dazzling Lights, which um, I'm okay having one copy of these, but maybe two can be overkill. Um, but is it Deafening Clarion versus um, Electrostatic Field? Electrostatic Field just fills in our just fits in the Is it deck, but um, deck much more consistently without all the um, without the need to splash. I mean, we could end up splashing black, in fact, and Deafening Clarion can just. Um, can just be totally cyborg away. Maybe the electrostatic field is the card we're looking for. Um, you can keep ping. You can ping the opponent. Um, you know, do a little bit of damage to your life total while um, uh, trying to protect car. Trying to pe protect your life total. So I can see myself taking this. We are setting up to be a very um, spell heavy deck. Um, so I think electrostatic field is the pick here. And I do want to force myself to Izzet due to Ralph Viceroy. I mean, I can still be Demir, um, but I think Electrostatic Field should be the pick here. Um, now, what do we have? We have Ornery Goblin, which is in the fine, which is a fine two drop. I like this card because um, it has the ability to block and deal with one toughness um, ground creatures. Um, it can just totally negate like a goblin banneret from the from the board, a um, a, a blade instructor, um, any one toughness creatures. It just gets a free trade and free kill off of it. Um, the is it card flavor card fire urchin isn't really an is it card to be honest. It feels more of a boros card. I mean, sure, maybe you can cast two instant sorceries just to become a three power attacker, which is okay, but just casting one instant sorcery just to pump this once uh, usually doesn't isn't a big deal. Um, at the end of the day, it's just a two mana, one three blocker that trades for itself. So I'm actually pivoting towards the Ornery Goblin. I just think having just having a two powered attacker right away without the need to um, play an instant sorcery spell just to buff it up and, you know, it has a little slight ups side of trample is just better and um, the the passive ability of this helps blank out one toughness creature so I'm leaning towards the Ornery Goblin here other great cards in this pack Parhelion Patrol is pretty good but I don't think we're going to lean towards Boros or Celestia here um, Server Strands is fine but um, usually uh, we need a lot of sacrifice fodder if we're a uh, Demir deck so it's definitely Ornery Goblin here <laughs> Uh, here I don't hate myself taking a Cosmotronic Wave. There's also an Is It Locky here. Um, if we're playing sideboard games, Cosmotronic Wave works better in a con um, if if you are um, again control. I mean, no, it works better if you're aggressive. My bad. If you're an aggro Is It deck, this card can do a lot of work for you. In a control deck, this is most of a, mostly a sideboard because um, again, not every deck that you're playing against is Boros. The Cosmotronic Wave um, against Boros is pretty good, so I can see this being a sideboard card in control and a great aggressive card um, in either Boros or is it? Um, so looking at our deck layout, we might be a control build, a control um, is it deck. Therefore, Cosmotronic Wave might not be that great. However, we could still be a mid-range or aggressive deck, so maybe I can just bank on a Cosmotronic Wave. Is it lock? It helps us ramp. It's still decent. The draw two cards but um yeah i think i do like the cosmotronic wave maybe just as a speculative um card just as a speculative pick of being aggressive there's also boros guild gave we want to splash in jeskai but um for the most part i think it's this pick here okay i like command of storms fine removal spell there's also a goblin electromancer um Excellent two drop and is it you can make every single um, sp instant speed spell you cast um, cost one less and um, I might just pick up here but I do like command of storms um, just a fine instant speed removal trick in a control or, or even aggressive is it um, deck but mostly in the control. Um, removal is scarce in limited and um, I do want my first copy of Command of Storm at least. Um, I might, I think I won't, would like it over the Goblin Electromancer. I mean, a discount is relevant, but at the end of the day, you want a lot of removal in Limited, because removal can get very scarce. Um, pe I mean, other players tend to overdraft it. I, bots tend to draft it, so um, 
think I'm going to take the Command of Storms here, just because um, we need the removal spell. Um, don't mind a Leaf Frog, nice stuff for an aggressive Is it deck. The one toughness can be a little bit of a liability, but um, having this fly over um, and attack your opponents can be pretty nice, so I'm just going to take it here. Okay, Sonic Assault kind of sets us up for a nice Is it aggro deck. Not a big fan of Goblin Locks, but if I, at the end of the age, it's a two mana um, with a one toughness, and it's not that great. Um, even if it can't attack past defenders, uh, it can get stoneballed by creatures without defenders. So, um, easy Sonic Assault here. Looks like we want to set up for an aggressive is it deck, and uh, even though Electro Stack Field doesn't fit in well, um, we could still be mid range, so let's just pick it up here and go. Um, don't think we're casting Maniacal Rave, Wave. Maniacal Rage. Well, it's possible because we're being aggro, is it? Don't mind giving this to a single creature. It just does fall into the um, problem of getting two for one by having an enchantment up, but sometimes you can sneak away if it's enhanced surveillance, something I'm taking, um, even though it could be an uncommon for the vault, so easy Maniacal Rage. Could use a Disdainful Stroke in this deck. Um, could be fine in an aggro deck. I don't mind having one of these. Um, even though Maximize Velocity would make a little bit more sense for an aggro deck. Um, this card is not a high pick. Just because it doesn't really give you evasion. Sure, you can um, give a creature plus one plus one. But the opponent can easily block it for the turn. Um, um, it is great with a flyer. Like maybe Leapfrog. So I don't hate it. But um, I would much prefer just taking the, the, our first copy of Disdainful Stroke. These tend to wheel. And um, it's not a really high pick priority. So... Let's pick the Disdainful Stroke here. Here, I'm not a big fan of Graphic Punch, even though it is it fits well in an aggressive um, build. It is still 4 mana, it's still sorcery speed, so you're going to take your whole turn trying to not only uh, set up a high powered um, creature, but you're going to spend a whole turn um, also just, um, just dealing damage. And um, you might as well just attack with a creature instead of using Graphic Punch. So that's not a good card. I do like myself a Dowsing Lights. Um, at the end of the day, Furious Hollow Gear is just a fine filler card, doesn't have any evasion, 3-2 gets blanked easily. Dazzling Lights has been an overperformer for me in this um, format. Just the one mana ability and the ability to surveil 2 and, and um, uh, adjust trades into your favor makes a lot of sense, so I'm just going to take the Dazzling Lights here. Don't know if I'm playing Book Devourer. Uh, let's see, it's a 6 mana, 4-5. That's a lot of mana. Whenever it deals combat damage player, you may you may discard a cards in your hand if you do draw many that many cards. Uh, don't know. Probably not gonna play it, but it could be a fine curve topper. We'll see. Um here, don't think any of these matter. Okay, so we're looking to um draft a uh either a looks like our deck is looking like mid range, um, is it? We still can pivot towards an aggressive is it deck. Um and then later on, cut off the high-end cards and the control cards like Electrostatic Field and maybe um, maybe keep the rest of them. We'll see. Uh, Dawn of Hope is great, but not for our deck. Don't know if you want to splash for it. Um, this card is better off if you have multiple, if you're already playing the white deck, where you can uh, make multiple copies of one when Soldier tokens in the late game and also pay to draw cards. But this card is definitely a bomb. Pick one, pack one. But um, not something I'd go for in our colors. Um, there's a first copy of Radical Idea, which isn't bad. Um, nice cantrip to draw a card. Helps feel Murmuring Mystic. Puts sorceries and instances in our graveyard. There's also Capture Sphere, which is a decent removal spell, which um, is very important in draft, again, because um, <sighs> removal tends to be rare and uh, scarce. Another Ornery Goblin wouldn't mind it as a 2-drop, but I wouldn't pick it over either Radical or ID or Capture Sphere in this. Notion Rain we can try to splash for, but don't think it's necessary if we already have some um, cards in our color that we can take. So um, I am liking the Radical Idea, just as a cantrip on 2 that can draw us a card. Uh, maybe trigger the Electrostatic Field, help Fuel Rawl, and Murmuring Mystic. Don't hate our first copy. Um, Passing up a capture spear kind of sucks though, because it is fine removal. Removal is important, but um, let's see. Maybe radical idea could wheel. Uh, maybe I'd find taking our first copy. It just makes sense in is it that deck to have a lot, lot jump start. So I'm just gonna take it here. 
don't hate a goblin crater maker there's also an excellent five drop watching a miss is great um uh let's see watching miss gives us a nice late game flyer to close out the game the surveil too is really nice it's great in demir and is it um there's also goblin crater maker which is good in boros and is it as well um the ability to destroy a Carlos permanent could be fine targeting artifacts even though a lot of artifacts aren't be playing this game um in this format um Deal to target creature is nice. Um, can give can be a nice early game card to deal with, um, like Boros for example, if they have a problematic um, two toughness creature like Suckholm Stalwart, which you can sacrifice and destroy too. Can also target down Healer Hawks. So it's between these two. It just depends on what we our deck needs. Um, let's see. So Michael Rage probably not. Probably don't need a Book Devourer. We'll see. We'll put it in the sideboard for now. Um, Cosmotronic Wave could be sideboard out. Like ha like having a first copy of Disdainful Stroke. Electrostatic Field seems decent in our deck. Don't hate it. Wouldn't mind a 5-drop Flyer as a top ender as a way to curve out in the top. Also helps fix us, fix our land. Could be much more important than a Goblin Crater Maker. Goblin Crater Maker does fit an aggressive Is it deck much more, however. Just because it can clear a path. Um, we do have Route Is It as our 5 drop. But um, yeah, it's between these two. Could use an extra 2 drop, don't hate it. In which Goblin Crater Maker can fit perfectly. So it's close. Maybe we do need a late game card to close that game. Maybe we aren't looking to be aggressive, but more, again, just a mid range with uh, the Murmuring Mystic and the uh, Commandus with um, Grizz. A Rowl and a Disdainful Stroke in the deck. So maybe the mid range, the Watch and a Miss makes more sense. This is hard. Um, two drops are hard to find. Hmm. Let's think here. Yeah, I think I like the Watch and a Miss. That I'm just going to take it here. Um, just a way to curve out our late game and have a nice evasive attack or so. Definitely gonna take it here. I can see the Surveil having a lot more upside. Great, excellent, I love our first copy of Goblin Electromaster. Um, definitely to pick here, don't need a second call to try and wave. Yeah, um, there's no reason to ponder too much. Um, guess I like our second Goblin Electromaster. There's also Beam Splitter Mage. Um, this card is only good and aggressive is it. Um, you do need a lot of combat tricks to support this and some creatures on the battlefield as well. Things such as Sur Strike, maybe even Maximize Velocity or uh, Maximize Altitude, that's what it's called, the one that makes you fly, can make this card a real um, real powerhouse. But um, it's, a, it's a build around and um, I think I still prefer the Goblin Max Electromaster as a safer pick. It's good in both archetypes. Um, in aggro is it and um, in control is it as well there's also a, an unexplained disappearance which I wouldn't mind taking as well but gotta take the goblin electromancer here just an excellent two drop allows us to um, give our spells discounts and um, yep just take it here okay um, so there's a notion rain that we can try to speculate on splashing. Or we can just take another 5-drop Flyer, Hellkite Whelp, helps to blow fire late game, which I don't hate. Um, decent Flyer, the ability to ping down 1 toughness creatures could be relevant. I think I'm down for it. We haven't picked up any splashing, and Notion Rate incentivizes us for splashing, and uh, that can make things a little bit awkward when we're drafting, so... Hellkite Whelp is the pick here. Guessing our Goblin Electromaster, there's also Sure Strike. There's also a way to fix our mana, but... Um, I think Goblin Electromaster just, 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 just such a good card. I think I'm gonna take it here. Um, let's see here. Let's look at our creature count. Yeah, I could do another extra two drop. There's a hole at three, which we can try to use a get a Piston Fist Cyclops or another Leapfrog for. But I think the Goblin Electromaster is just too good to pass up. So be taking here. Nothing in our colors, unfortunately. Anything to splash? Not really. Just taking the common for the vault. Um, okay, Invernum Vent could be useful. Um, we mostly have instant spells. Um, we could pick up maybe like a Beacon Bolt. 
or maybe a lava coil that we can invent. Otherwise, what is there? There's a barging sergeant, but our five drops already look pretty stacked here. Um, three five drops look fine. We don't, and this only works well best in a um, Boros deck, regardless, even if it's in an Is it aggro. There's a decent fresh face recruit as a two drop, but we have a bunch of two drops already. Um, works better in Boros again, so we're just going to take it and burn vent. Here, we can take a Speculative Guildgate in case we want to splash white. Let's say Open Conclave Tribunal. That's a card we would like to splash for, Luminous Bonds. Definitely taking over um, make Goblin Locksmith and Enhanced Surveillance since we already have a decent amount of twos. Okay, I guess we can take our Fire Urchin. There's also Fearless Hover there as a filler 3 drop. Um, how good is Fire Urchin in our deck? It's okay. I mean... Again, I'd rather have this in Boros, to be honest. So maybe the Fearless Halberdier can make the cut. Um, casting two spells per turn just to get this into a three power creature with Trample, I, I'm not really a big fan of. You can cast Monocle Rage on it, I guess. Put some enchantments on it, but um, usually in an Izzet deck, you want to have instants and sorceries and non enchantments because uh, you want to put these in the graveyard to feel your um, payoff. So maybe just taking a. The halberdier, just in case we don't have enough three drops, got to take a big. Now our halberdier, don't think I'm playing it, but I'm just gonna put in a sideboard just in case. Goblin locksmith, I'm gonna put this in a sideboard just in case we don't have two drops. That's a late um, rhizome lurcher. Um, shouldn't be late in this pack, but I guess we're drafting with bots. I'm um, just a powerful Golgari cards. Um, sometimes you end up facing opponents with like three, three, four rhizome lurchers, and you just end up losing the game. Um, happens, but what can you do? It's MTG Arena. Not taking any of these cards. Oh, what a hate draft. Maybe just Lock on Restorer if I'm playing against it. Yep, none of these cards matter. Um, so what are we looking for? A little bit more removal. Um, another bomb. Maybe a Crackling Drake. Um, something in our colors. More three drops. A whole, we have a hole at four. So maybe a Wishcoin Crab. But a little bit more removal, a lot more instances and sorceries. So um, yeah, let's just go from here. Okay, um, two cards we can consider, maybe three. Um, Night Veil Sprite is a great two drop. Best in Demir, but still serviceable in Is It. There's also Goblin Banneret, which is great, but works only best in the Boros deck. It can work well in Is It Aggro. In which um, we are again looking kind of aggro, um, kind of mid range for the most part. It do need a lot of two drops, which we have a decent number of them. Pumping this once, attacking, um, and pumping, giving a mentoring a creature could be pretty nice. It's kind of awkward against our three power creatures, however. Um, that being said, it can it can get stonewall pretty easily. Um, Ornery Goblin is a great counter to this card. It, it prevents it from attacking because um, Ornery Goblin just gives it a free trade. And I ran into situations like that when I've been drafting Boros, and it's a pain in the butt. But anyways, um, the Mirror Informant, fine three drop. I'm not taking it over Night Veil Sprite. Would we'll love our first copy of Passable Dead, but we'll never take it over Night Veil Sprite. So it's between these two again. Which works better in our deck? Um, let's think. Can't really mentor into the electrostatic field. Mentoring into Goblin Electromancer can be fine. We need to pump twice for Leapfrog. Um, not really attacking the Murmuring Mystic too much. Yeah, so I think it's just a Night Veil Sprite. Um, just has a lot more upside. Just gonna take it here. Okay, when mine our first copy of Capture Sphere. There's also another Goblin Electromancer, but um, I think that might be overkill. Um, we already have three already. We don't really have too many instant, expensive instant speed spells other than Invert and Vent that we might want to use. We already have a Disdainful Stroke. Don't think I need two copies. I think I need to pick, our, pick up our first um, Capture Sphere just because removal might be lacking and we might need it. It's not instant or sorcery, but regardless, I think it's it could nest, sometimes we definitely need the filler removal. Um, especially with this dirt pack, and we haven't picked up much besides Command of Storms and maybe Rao. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to be my pick here. There's also land which I wouldn't hate. Um, nice way to s fix our mana. But some late Golgari, I mean, not late, but two great Golgari cards. I always see Infection and Drake with Golgari Fine Broker, but definitely more of the best card in this pack is probably um, Golgari Fine Broker. I mean, they're both 
almost similar in my opinion. So let's pick the Capture Sphere and move on. Um, wouldn't mind having a Muse Drake. There's also Passwall Adept. Uh, I think I like my first copy. Just for a way to close out the game. Um, it has been quite an overperformer. Mostly in Demir. I don't know about Is It, But sometimes you just have that 3 power creature that you just want to get across the Passwall Adept. And I definitely think having a copy is necessary. Um, just to close out the game in either a control or an aggro deck. There's Muse Drake, Fine Cantrip, drawing you a card. It can be quite expensive. It could, however, block you know annoying one toughness creatures like um, Bars and Bats or um, even Healer's Hawks. Um, it's an okay card. Don't hate it, but um, Fine Cantrip. But um, I definitely like having my first copy of Pass Wall Adept, so I'm just gonna pick it up here. Okay, um, like the Unexplained Disappearance, there's also Sonic Assault, um, which is pretty nice. I mean, you can jumpstart this, prevent an opponent from tapping down an opponent's creature, maybe being aggressive with it, or being defensive with it. I think it's fine. And um, But Unexplained Disappearance might just be the pick here. There's also a 2-drop, but we have enough 2s already. So let's see. Let's see our current deck. Um at our creature counts, spells, and sorceries. Don't know if I'm playing my Maniacal Rage. And is it that deck? I think it's okay having a low creature count because you're usually playing a lot of instances and sorceries, anyways, to proc off stuff like Murmuring Mystic and Rao. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve creatures. So, so I see twelve creatures being fine in Is it deck. Um, so it's between these two. I like the ability to jumpstart with Sonic Assault. It could sometimes just close out the game. We are looking mid-range with some aggressive cards like Leapfrog. Um, uh, what else? Watcher and... Not really. Um, but again, I just like the jumpstart ability. That route that works well with Route is Vice Roar. It can be a defensive as well. Just really flexible. So I'm going to take the Sonic Assault here. How about Curve Topper Inescapable Blaze to finish the game up? There's also a tapped land, but maybe we need the Inescapable Blaze in the mid-range deck just to close out the opponent. I can definitely see it being played here. I wouldn't mind Is It Lock It as well to follow up. We have a pass wall depth, so I don't think I'm taking it. I wouldn't mind a combat trick. I would definitely take the Guild Gate over the combat trick at this point, but I think the Inescapable Blaze could just help, out, help us close out the game um, if we're being um, aggressive enough in this mid-range deck. And, um, yeah, I think I'll take it here. And with the Goblin Electromancer, it gets a huge, enormous discount. So it's pretty good. I uh, guess we can take a Piston Fist Cyclops. Again, I would not love another tap lamb, but um, I think we need our, we have a huge hole at three, and it's a fine replacement for Fearless Halberdier, which is a good card, in fact. So we have enough instants and sorceries to get to start attacking. So I'm just going to pick up the Piston Fist, Fist, Fist Cyclops here. Oh, that's a late direct current. Um, seems like red is open. I'm just going to definitely snatch up here. Makes sense in it deck. Um, just a very powerful removal spell with flashback. Um, could take my second pass wall depth. Could just take another ordinary goblin. It's a fine attacker that trades into a three drop. Um, so it depends. This is a fine late game mana sink. It's not a good attacker, unfortunately. Um, don't know which is much more has a higher upside. We are looking to be mid-range, so maybe our two drops aren't the ones they're looking to get in. But it does deal with, again, annoying stuff like Ornery Goblin. I mean, I mean, not my bad. It does deal with cards like um, um, Goblin Banneret. So it's these two cards here. Um, this could trade into a three drop. It's a fine attacker. Could chip in two points of damage. Maybe Pass Wall Death, our second copy, could be fine. I would hate having... Because if they match, this 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 could just close out the game. I can see it being fine in the early game and late game. So while this kind of kind of sucks in the late game, so I'm just gonna take the passwall depth. Another passwall depth. I guess I can take it. There's also maximize altitude, which can help give one of our some of our creatures flying. And I think I'm just gonna pick that up. Don't need three passwall depths. Kind of overkill. Ooh, all right, excellent. Another Goblin Electromancer here. But there is also, is it Guild Gates, which I think will just be the pick here. Um, need a way to fix our mana. We already have three Goblin Electromancers. Um, even though they make inescapable, inescapable Blaze cheaper and the rest are instances and sorceries, I think having three should be enough. Um, don't need to really um, take too much. I mean, I could just take it. 
it's a fine two drop. Um, could replace one of our other two drops. So let's think. I mean, having a guild gate is nice too, in case we don't draw our double colors. We're mostly going to be playing um, two colors anyway, so yeah, I think I'm just going to take it. I think we need the mana fixing. Would suck if um, the next card is a guild gate, but you never know. All right, guess fire pick here. Yeah, I like the storm strike. Might just be. Okay, okay, so let's see. Let's look at our deck. Alright, so seven cuts here. Um, I can see myself maybe cutting land since um, Goblin Electromancer kind of gives these two cards um, quite a discount. But we do have a number of five cost cards that I think we want to play. Um, and we do have some mana sinks like Pass Wall Depth and... Um, What's in our mana sink? That's pretty much it. I mean, for I mean for jumpstart cards. So what are we looking to cut here? I guess maximus maximize altitude can be cuttable. Um, second pass wall depth can be cuttable. Electrostatic feel doesn't seem too bad, um, but I think it could be cuttable. Let's look at our non creatures here. Um, we have 15 non creature spells, counting um, Ral and the Capture Sphere, which are pretty much um, non instances in sorcery so more like 13 instances in sorceries which is fine I guess this card can get in a little bit of damage could be a fine blocker but it's not really high on my list uh, could just take out pass wall depth fire urchin again is underwhelming it's only good if you can pump this by a lot it can work well sure strike but um, we only have one copy and usually you just want to use it um, on another creature so I'm just gonna take it take out the fire urchin here um, don't hate a copy of Disdainful Stroke. Always liking that. Could take out Maniacal Rage. Um, actually, I'm just take out Fearless Halberdier. Just not a great 3-drop in general. Our 3-drops drops are kind of lacking, but it's fine. We, we have some uh, instant speed spells to take care of it. Cosmotronic Wave could be sideboard out. Um, are we being thinking... Are we trying to be that aggressive? We're not like Boros aggressive. So I can see myself cutting this. Um... Yeah, I can see myself cutting um, Electrostack, I mean, Cosmotronic Wave, because at the end of the day, um, even though we have minions, or I don't think our game plan is winning by minions. It's just to cast a ton of instances of sorceries and um, just dealing damage from there. Don't know if I want to cut the Hellkite Whelp. Could be a fine um, 5 drop in this deck. Invert Invents, let's see how good is it. Instant Speed. There's a sorcery card, I can grab a direct current with it. But other than that, um, yeah, other than that, I don't think Invert Invent is too good in this deck. Um, if I side in Cosmotronic Wave, it could be okay, but it only has one sorcery target. Um, if you're casting this for six mana, um, just to find an instant speed spell that you can just draw, um, it's not that great. So I'm just going to take out the Invert Invent. I think I do like the Inescapable Blaze as a curve topper. Um, Three more cuts here. I guess Maniacal Rage can go. Just It doesn't really have great synergy in this deck. It's just an enchantment. I can get two for one for it. Um, let's see here. Maximize Altitude. Give a creature flying. 1-1 one, one and flying. I don't think we're really that aggressive again. It's a fine card to um, you know place on the Piston Fist Cyclops. But we do have Flyers already in the late game. Uh, we have birds to fly. We have leapfrog that can gain flying through instant speed already. Yeah, so I don't think we need maximize altitude. So one more cut. Electrostatic field is cuttable. We could cut a pass wall adept. I mean, I think having one should just be enough. So let's just do that. Do like the sure strike. Could be a fine combat trick. Um, maybe a defensive combat trick too. Or a removal spell. And, and it's an instant or sorcery. Keep it like this. Um, let's think. Here. These two are enchantments. Do like Command of Storms. Glad we picked that up. Um, over the Electromancer because they were being passed up a lot. So one, two, three. Let's count our creatures. Twelve creatures, eleven spells. Could be fine. Um, especially in a is it deck. 
Could we, should we cut a land too? We do have Goblin Electromancer to help ramp out our um, five cost spells, our expensive cost spells. Um, is there any? Well, we might need to land to discard for um, Jumpstart. So Sonic for stuff like Sonic Assault and Radical Idea. I can see myself playing 17 lands. What? Well, don't think I want to consider this. Maybe if we cut a land, maybe a second pass. Well, no, not really. Not really necessary. Frillis Hawa Deer, don't think I care. Don't think about it. I could sign out a land for Cosmotronic Wave. I guess that's my only consideration. But it's not really great, again, unless you are being incredibly aggressive or um, you're dealing with a Boros opponent with a lot of one toughness. It's too situational at times. So, yeah, I think this is our deck. Inverted Ben again doesn't deal too well. Hopefully, we can get a high above. Um, my high win rate with this, I, I do love this draft. It was really consistent, really nice. 16 and 14, I like it even split, makes sense. Um, let me just think again. Don't hate a copy of Dazzling Lights. Yeah, I think this is our build. Um, yeah, I think Dazzling Lights should be okay. Alright, let's try this deck out and... Uh, I think this is just going to be our, uh, maybe the f final draft, final GRN. No, I don't want to call it final because it's not the last draft that I'll ever have with um, Guilds of Ravnica. So, is it GRN um, 2019? Cool. Um, hopefully this gets us the wins. Yep. And let's go from there. Alright. Let's see. Let's see if this hand's keepable. Keepable, I do like the Goblin Mancer on two, Electromancer, uh, Cyclops on three. Plus um, a direct current if I want to clear a path and um, attack with a fist and fist cyclops. So this looks like a good starting hand. Might need double red for direct current. Hmm. Might adjust my mana configuration um, after this game. Might have to review. And look what we need. What are our double reds and double blues and whatnot? Okay, so we just need one more red to have direct current active. Fist and Fist Cyclops is fine. Don't really want to attack the memory. I like I can, perhaps. Um, let's think. If I attack, um, I can cast Dazzling Lights, get a nice trade off. I'd rather just have the Fist and Fist Cyclops so I can attack with it next turn. If I decide to attack with both, and well, actually, no. I need to cast this before um, attacking. I mean, this still blocks the um, Mesmer as well, so if he gets minus two, minus two to my Goblin Electromancer, the Piston Fist Cyclops is pretty nice with it. But he could again have a combat trick. I don't think I want to lose my Piston Fist Cyclops to a Sure Strike. So if I tend to block what happens, um, he uses a combat trick, kills it. Ah, uh, no, I don't think I want to. Okay, there's a Sonic Assault. Um, I think I'm just gonna cast it this turn just to um, just to deal damage with the Cyclops. Don't hate it. Maybe should I cut land in hand just to flashback it. But definitely want to get in some damage here. So if he has a Whisper Agent, I'm definitely gonna cast a Dazzling Lights on it, pushing for a lot of damage and pass. 
now he wanted to consider maybe keeping the Mesmerist behind. And, he, and it looks like he might have a Sure Strike because um, he was keeping uh, mana up. If, if that's the case, um, he seems like Dazzling Lights is fine, but I'm just going to cast Sonic Assault again here. Um, targeting his Dolphin Mesmerist, discarding a land. So yeah, this does look kind of aggressive. But I think our deck is mostly mid-range. We're going to attack him for 6. Hopefully close out the game next turn if we draw our red. Luckily the opponent doesn't have any counter spells. If he does nothing here, I might just cast the Capture Sphere and just push him for 2. Or maybe I can just main phase the Dazzling Lights. Um, and attack. But it looks like he might have an answer. Okay, he's casting Command Storms. That resolves. So here, next turn I can just attack. Um, and then use Dazzling Lights to finish off the, the Docking Mesmerist. If he decides to block. Okay, there's a Sonic Assault. Um, so yeah, Sonic Assault is a pretty um, busted card. Um, especially in the aggressive the deck. The ability to just tap down a creature and deal two is just pretty busted. So now, next game, we're just going to look at our um, deck configuration. So glad that we picked up two copies of these. Excellent with Rao, excellent with um, the Murmuring Mystic. Um, great with the Electromancer. Just a solid aggressive card overall. Works well with the um, Fist and Fist Cyclops as well. Okay, um, let's see. Our double red. Our only double red is... Well, there's double red in, in Escapable Blaze. There's double red... Direct current, or do we have any double blues? Not really. Okay, we have Watcher to miss as a double blue. So, I mean, with double red, last game we didn't draw it. I mean, Watcher and miss is also late game. I might consider just pivoting a little bit towards red. Um, having this stuck in your early in your hand sucks. That's for sure. Nine, ten, seven, eight. 10 and 8. Uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, maybe we'll just keep it even. Maybe it's just the luck of the draw. Maybe we weren't supposed to really draw um, Direct Current on turn 2, or we just unfortunately didn't get our second red, but... Um... I think an even split is better. It's best for us. Especially when we don't have enough blue to maybe cast, like, you know, any spell with blue is, you don't want to lean towards one color heavily. It was just the luck of the draw, unfortunately, that, bad luck of the draw, to be more exact, to, um, not have any double red last game. So, yeah. You guys are hearing any noise I'm eating right now. So, um, yeah, I'm just eating Red Baron pizza near my computer, so, uh, hopefully it isn't too distracting and we can just concentrate on the game. Uh, don't think this is fine. I think I need my red for the Goblin Electromancer. Having Dazzling Lights for red. I do have Murmuring Mystic on four, but this is on the play. I think I'm fine mulliganing this hand. Okay, now I like this hand. I think I'm keeping six here. Sign of Salt could be pretty decent. Um, I could be greedy and bottom a land, but maybe I just bottom the Hellkite Whelp. Um, I'm missing on a flyer, but I can still win without it. So. Okay, Radical Idea. I can cast that for one next turn. Really awesome. Alright, Pump plays a two drop. I could just Radical Idea first, and I, I think that's what I'm going to do. There's really no need to uh, do on the opponent's turn. Um, so let's play a land. Attack for two. And I think I'm going to play the second Electromancer just to put more power into the board. And the ability to uh, maybe if we pick up like uh, an Escapable Blaze next turn, it can be four man. That'll be pretty insane with double Electromancer, so... Definitely liking here. 
Um, could just keep the land hand for discard next turn. I feel like the pass wall adept. Bounty agents. Okay, so this is a 2 2 vigilance. Destroy target legendary permanent death artifact creature enchantment. So this could be bad for Raul. But other than that, um, I don't think it's too big of a deal. Uh, let's play the radical idea first. Discard a land. Okay, so now I can attack and cast Dazzling Lights. So this is the reason why um, you want to sometimes Radical Idea before you attack. Now, I think I'm going to cast Dazzling Lights here. It just makes a lot more sense than, than actually just casting, for example, Sonic Salt to tap down a 2-2, which I can easily trade for. Um, do I want Piston Fist Cyclops? I think it has the potential to be very good next turn. Maybe I don't need to land. Yeah, I think I'll keep the Piston Fist Cyclops, just because I have Sonic Assault as an attacker. Um, here I think I want to play out my land, um, just, uh, put down the Pass Wall of Death. It would suck if he has Fine Finality on 6, but there's not much I can do against that. That game just, that game just wins you, um. Um, so maybe I can try to hold on to Piston Fist Cyclops in my hand next turn and try to sandbag it. But I think I need to cast it just to have a win con. It could be really bad, however, if he casts his fine finality, but so be it. Can't really beat that card anyways. Finding Salt would be pretty disgusting next turn. I think it's lethal, too, if he plays a big minion and I cast Sonic Assault. Okay, part healing control. Does he have a 2-drop? That's the other question. No, he doesn't, so this could just be good game. Um, there's also Inescapable Blaze, which I can just cast. I, uh, but I think I want to just Sonic Assault here, just to get the flashback going. He might respect this and then have a... Um, okay, let's do that. Don't think I need to cast it again. Definitely attacking for 9 now. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He has, probably has an answer for something. He has Assassin's Trophy. Okay, let that resolve. Next turn I might just play Inescapable Blaze on him. I'll definitely search my deck for a land card. Uh, maybe another red could be fine. So I can cast maybe both. If I top deck a land next turn, well, I still need to pay the flashback cost by discarding land, so I think this is fine. Um, hopefully he doesn't play any Burglar Rats. That would be really unfortunate because I do have this card to finish him next turn. And it cannot be countered either, so. Hopefully no Burglar Rat. Okay, one drop. Prowl Forger is going to game a crap of life. Let's see. Maybe not a lot. Maybe just one. Okay, so it should be a good game here. He's going to leave behind his blocker. He's attacking the air for two. So in play I can do is I can tap this down and go for, an, go for um, the damage. But here I'm just going to cast an escapable blaze. Game opponent. Alright, uh, let's... It's 2-0. Oh. Looking pretty good. Our deck is looking like on the aggressive side, but I still think I still don't think we should board in and cause the Triumph Wave. Most of the the abilities, most of the way we've been winning has been just the Sonic Assaults, just have been doing a lot of work. Having down a creature and just getting in for a lot of damage. Um, cause the Triumph Wave can be a little bit awkward since it costs 4 mana. And that's a lot. Just for an effect that is situational. First I need a, a huge chunk of creatures on the battlefield, or they need a bunch of one toughness creatures, and I need to either hit them for lethal on the way to turn after. Um, I do like this hand, I like the Piston Fist Cyclops on three. Um, hopefully I draw into a um, Goblin Electromancer, I do like the, I do like Rao too. Just casting them um, as a Planeswalker, um, it's just, just wins you the game, pretty much.
All right, um, not really high rated card in my opinion. Um, fire, what's this card? Fire Urchins, um, yeah, just doesn't do a lot of work unless you have a bunch of pump spells with it. Maybe like Sh Sure Strikes, Maximize Velocity. I can see it working. So now we have Piston Fist Cyclops. I think I'm fine trading if he decides to attack with it. He could just uh, play Sonic Assault against me next turn, and I might be forced to even um, capture Spirit the turn after, but we'll see. You should have Sonic Assault, maybe mana up. Um, okay, Elite Frog. So, I mean, that trades into my 3 2 as well. So let's see, I can play a land, I can play Passwall Depth and leave up Disdainful Stroke. Or I can try to flash in Capture Spear before combat. He didn't play, he misses Land Drop. So it's possible that, um, that we don't have to Disdainful Stroke anything. So I think I'm just going to try to flash in Capture Spear before combat. And I think I might, um, it depends if he plays an Instance or Sorceries before combat. If he's just going to attack, I think I'm just going to block and sure strike to 3-1. So he's going to cast Risk Factor here. Um, so I definitely need to do something here. I'm going to let that resolve. Um, I do not want the opponent to be drawing cards, so I'm just going to take the 4 for now. Um, moving to combat, um, I can't really block the 3-2. One, so I'm just gonna capture Spear the flyer here. He's gonna attack. I think I'm gonna. I, I think I'm gonna trade off. Um, I think it's worth it. Otherwise, um, yeah, I'm gonna take a crap load of damage here. I do like the Murring Mystic. This is really good. Um, maybe I should play it before the risk. The uh, I can't really counter risk factor, and he was stuck in three man. Man, so for the most part, I think he's just gonna play it. So I'm just gonna play. Um, Mystic play land pass. Think I might just take four here. I think I can take it again, and he's gonna lose a card. Another fire urchin. Okay. Didn't he's hasn't been drawing any lands for sure. Now he's attacking here. This is strange. I don't think he has any pump spells or anything to kill me, so I'm just gonna block. I think he's attacking because why not? I don't really see him trying to killing it. There's no death touch. Invent. Okay. Alright. Pretty decent play. Alright, uh, that was kind of bad. Um, I guess now I can um, play Rao. I mean, should I play Rao? I mean, he'll be taking a lot of damage. I think maybe I just put up a Passful of Depth first. Maybe set up a Sure Strike. Um, Best sure strike against the um, fire fire urchin. My bad. Um, don't have enough instants or sorceries to feel Rao, for example, for the most part. Whisper agent. Okay. I guess the opponent doesn't really want to discard his hand with the risk factor. Okay, Electrostag Field could be fine. I actually don't hate it. Let's see, um, so I don't have any sources or instances in the graveyard to activate it really yet. I can plus it, gain a card, maybe get a land perhaps, leave up Disdainful Stroke and Sure Strike. That could be possible. Other than that, maybe Electrostag Field could be fine. Leave up both Sure Strike and Disdainful Stroke. Don't hate it. Yeah, I think I'm just going to play the Electro Stack Field. Because he's going to be incentivized to attack Growl if I place him into the battlefield. Here, I can just easily cast a Sure Strike and take out the um, Whisper Agent. If he decides. Or, I mean, or I can just Stonewall. Here, I definitely want Disdainful Stroke here. Um, Get an instant sorcery in the graveyard. Um, if he decides to attack, I'm definitely going to block here. Okay, nothing. 
Okay, jump start with Rao. So like Rao, I'm plussing. Um, let's see here. I do like Rao, maybe plussing, putting a land into the battlefield, leaving up mana for both sure strike and radical idea. But for the most part, I think I want to leave red up, just in case we draw into second mountain. So I think I like Rao here for sure. And I don't think I'm minus I'm Rao. I'm gonna hover over you like a dark cloud. So plus, hmm. hopefully, a land decisions, on top. Decisions. I guess there's Electromancer, which is pretty fine. Um, Leaf Hug is Leapfrog. Leapfrog can get in some attacks. Goblin Electromancer could be just a little bit more valuable. Yeah, I'm just gonna pick the Goblin here. Fortunately, we don't have any mana up, so I think we just gotta try to hold off this attack. I don't think I'm ever going to ultimate this. Okay, Cosmotronic Wave. It's just going to use it to kill off Rao. Actually, he doesn't have enough to kill off Rao. Because he needs to... Um, it's, he, he's one off, so... Um, I think we're going to take it here. Oh, I, bruised my ego, too. is fine. I can just keep drawing cards with it, and that's that's pretty nice. Um, so, just plus Rao. <laughs> Time to choose. I like oh, the direct so current. Just an excellent card. Um, here, I think I'm just going to play Electromancer. That's radical idea. Uh, keeping lands for a jump start. I'm gonna cast direct current onto the whisper agent. I think it could be fine for me to attack with pass wall depth as well. Um, I could just radical idea end of turn. So I'm definitely attacking the pass wall depth here. I still have um. Goblin and Electrostack field behind the block. Maybe it's fine playing out the land to set up a sure strike to block the fire urchin. But. Risk factor. Now I'm going to take it again because, um. I'm going to take the 4 because I don't want him to draw 4 cards. I think that's just way too scary. Risk Factor would have been great in our deck too. Here and turn, I'm just going to cast Radical Idea. Discard Mountain. Rao's just going to win us a game outright. This card's absolutely disgusting. Um, Yeah, let's just plus Rao. Draw a card. Just want to peek. The weight is killing me. There's Sonic Assault and there's Night Veil Sprite. Um, I'll go with Night Sonic Assault right now. Could fill our graveyard. I mean, it's gonna go into graveyard anyways. We have flashbacks, so I'm gonna take two here. Could just attack here and then attack with both and then um direct current if he decides to block. And, if he, and if, he, if he has a combat trick, I can just sure strike in response, perhaps. So he's not going to block because he knows for sure um, um, I have direct current up. So now I have ways to tap it um, with Sonic Assault. And I think I should start um, casting it end of turn. Use Drake is annoying, and I think I'm just going to Sonic Assault that. Um, just so I can get an attacking with Night Veil Sprite. And just lower his life till in general. Rao is a busted card. I'm gonna cast Sonic Assault, tap down the Drake, Muse Drake. So I'm gonna deal three to him here. I'm gonna go down to ten. I mean nine. How much damage is it? Um, let's think here. Is it any target? Target creature. So I'm gonna use 
Sonic Assault again on his 1-3. This card will land. And this attack of Sure Strike for lethal. Yeah, why not? Should plus Ralph first, but I mean I can just cast any instant or sorcery at this point. Don't think I need an island. And just let damage happen. This car land. Wow, yeah, so Ral's busted. Um, always pick one pack when don't pass up on Ral. Even though it's not, even though you might have to force is it's, uh, it's a busted Planeswalker. I mean, it's the same deal if you open up Niv Mizzet, um, pick one pack one. You kind of want to incentivize to force is it into your draft because it's just so powerful. Um, so let's do it. And drops like these are just the best, where everything just flows smoothly. Draft, drafts that aren't the best are the ones that don't really have a clear bomb. And so I have to pick one, pack one. And you're kind of forced into your second pack to maybe pick your second primary color from there on. And to know what colors you're going to settle in. Some drafts just suck. There's randomness in drafting just to let you know. Sometimes you don't get the bomb rare, sometimes you don't get the bomb mythic. The opponent just has better quality cards than you. Happens. Night Rose Sprite on two, I do like that because I that gives me the ability to um, fix my draw. Hopefully it doesn't get an answer in the early game. But I think I like it on two that enough that I'm just going to keep this hand. Force Curry, okay, so we're definitely playing against a, an aggressive deck. Alright, um, not a really high pick card. Sure, you can give Mentor in his haste, but at the end of the day, just a 1 1 pace. Gets blanked pretty easily. It's a fine Mentor to target, but the fact that you only have a second 2 drop to follow up is kind of bad. So I'm just going to play the Night Veil Sprite. If he attacks, I'm not blocking these. That implies a combat trick. I'd rather just have the attack with the Night Veil Sprite, even if it gets answered by something like Righteous Blow. I can easily, I can get a Surveil off of it and get my red mana going ASAP. Okay, it's an attack of the Flyer. I think I'm taking it. No choice but to take it. Because I'm not going to give up Night Veil Sprite. 2-2. Uh, two, two. Guess I'm attacking here. Guess we missed our blue. So what now? I can play a land, play Leaf Frog. Um, don't know if I want to trade off the 3 1. It just puts more power on the board. I think I have to surveil this turn. Just to get the red mana going. Definitely dumping the Hellkite. Can't really cast it. We already have Watcher for 5. We really need our red mana ASAP. Otherwise, we're just going to get overrun. I mean, maybe it was fine keeping on top. I mean, <coughs> we have radical idea to filter through, anyways. If he attacks with attack the, the torch carrier, I don't think it was right in this attack. So that's a strange card to be playing in Boros. I don't agree with it. Um, I think the play here is just to cast radical idea, give Leaf Rock flying, and uh, attack. Electromancer, definitely attacking here. Hopefully get our red man on top. If we don't pick up our red again, we're just going to be in huge trouble for this whole entire draft. We will need an Electro Stack Field. Let's get rid of it. I 
think I'm playing my land out, even though I can Radical ID and Jumpstart. Well, I think I can Radical ID and Jumpstart end of turn, actually. Even though we do miss out on some flyer damage, I think we really need the, uh, we really need the mana. I mean, actually, there's no need to um, give it flying now, since he's going all in. So we're at 9, we need to be a little bit careful here. Do I want to... Yeah, I think I want a Radical Idea here. Um, what's the most useless card? Maybe a Sure Strike, don't think I really need that. He might have Luminous Bonds next turn if he decides to... Um, uh, finally we have red mana, um, could just play the 5 drop, I think that's the play here. Um, yep, definitely the play. And I should attack first here, I'm gonna leave behind the leaf frog, just so it can block maybe the fire urchin if it gets out of hand. Murray Mystic is excellent, provides a blocker on the ground and follow up by direct current. We don't have the mana to, to cast direct current, but I think I still keep it. Um, I can, I can easily just, um... Uh, I think I'm fine attacking the Night Will Sprite for one. I mean, I could use it to block the one drop, actually, so maybe that was a bit of a misplay. I don't really need to Surveil as well. He's already Surveil 2 as well, so... I need to stop playing so fast, otherwise I just make misplays like these. So he's going to attack in the air. He might have Sure Strike. Um, definitely going to block here. Definitely going to block here. He might have Sure Strike in the air. That would suck. Okay, he's casting Sure Strike on the Fire Urchin, so he might have a second. Or he has to Take Heart. Yeah. I guess he's just playing an. Tony's just playing an aggro. Straightforward aggro. Um. And that's a good strategy. Amazing how the opponent managed to win there. Um, so. Yeah, it happens when you don't draw your reds, so, um game by the opponent. Yeah, that was just another unfortunate game where we didn't draw a red mana. Um, I was expecting at least um, have some on top, the Night Vale Sprite on two. Okay, um, cool. Island and Mountain and Dolan Electromancer. I do like this hand. I'm keeping. Alright, opponent is just AFK. Or maybe just sign where not to keep the hand. Totally reasonable. Okay, uh, gonna start with blue here. Island, let's go. Okay, Demir Guildgate. Um, drop in the Electromancer. Start getting in. So he's definitely going to mirror here. Enhanced surveillance. Okay, that's interesting. Usually this card is not necessary with a lot of surveil. It does improve your draw steps significantly, I guess, but um, just not a high pick among drafts, and uh, it's really not a necessary card if you have a great demir deck that's constantly already surveilling. So. Don't know what the opponent is um, doing. All right, so yep, I guess just attack, play another goblin electromancer, leave up maybe sure strike. 
Don't expect any haste creatures, but still, we just want to um, have the mana open. I mean, you could still have Burglar Rat, that's a problem. And I do need double blue to cast um, Electromancer, so I think I'm just going to play... Um, I mean, double blue to play the Watcher and the Mist, so I think I need to keep it alive. And I don't think I'm sure striking next um, on his turn at all. Demir doesn't tend to play haste creatures, so I think this is a uh, fine. Okay, Dark Blade Agent. I could attack with both um, if he doesn't block. Okay, so let's think here. So I can attack with both. Um, if he doesn't block, I can play Passwall Depth and try to attempt to Sure Strike it next turn. Or I can just um, Sonic Assault. It's possible. Or maybe he just surveils in his beginning of the turn and we can cast Sonic Assault to. Um, to um, waste his turn. And I think that's totally reasonable. So I'm just going to, um, don't want to tap double blue, let's play a mountain island, tap both efficiently in this pass. So the question is either Sonic Assault or Sure Strike. Sure Strike makes me more vulnerable to removal. Um, Sonic Assault um, is kind of like a nice trick. Let's see, Barrier Bones, Surveil, okay. So it's going to be a bit of, um, he's going to be, be a bit disappointed because I'm just going to cast, um, cast Sonic Assault on it before combat. Maybe Sure Strike could be better, but how, how do I get punished here? Maybe by Unexplained Disappearance. I mean, I need to deal with this eventually, so I think I'm going to try the Sure Strike method. Pass. I'm, I'm gonna do blocks first before um, I use the combat trick because um, because um, I, I want to prevent him from drawing a card. He could use um, the one mana um, combat trick. Okay, that's fine. Okay, at least I prevent the damage from getting through. And um, At least I've managed to prevent the damage from getting through, that's what's important to me. So I can tap down the wall, push in for 6, or I can just attack with deal 2 damage on his turn, I'll just activate Sonic Assault when he, if he decides to surveil. Maybe that's reasonable. Otherwise, what happens when I draw a land? Maybe I just just... I think the play where, um... Okay, there's also Electro Static Field. I think that works better with the, um, Sonic Assault. Since, since that deals damage. So he's just going to block one here, which is fine. He's going to take two. Next turn, he's going to take three on his turn with the Sonic Assault. So. so he's going to be a little bit wary. I think he's going to believe that I have Disdainful Stroke or something. So he's going to try to play around it. Uh, might attempt to block, maybe. Actually, no. If he attempts to attack... Move, move to combat. So Omni Spell Depth is not a great card to be um, at all. But I'm gonna let that resolve. And I don't think I need to cast Sonic Assault here. Because even if I do, um, again it deals two damage, I can't really get in, I can't really get through with the goblin electromancers. So I'm just gonna say go. I think that was mostly bait. So um let's just say he surveils um what happens. Um, I think I'm playing, playing the Passwall Depth for sure. I don't want to play into, um, what's that card? The, um, Deadly Visit. Otherwise, he's going to take out my Watch and a Miss, and he's going to be able to kill off a creature and draw a card. So I'm just going to play it safe here. I'm going to keep the land in hand, too, just in case he has Burglar Rat. And I can cast Watcher in the Mist next turn. Okay. Bars and bats is fine. I could tap it down. There's no reason to tap it down, though. I think he's just playing around some stuff. Okay, don't hate the Sign Assault. I can Sign Assault two cards, um, two of his creatures. Um, I can Sign Assault twice on his turn, actually. Which could just be the play, so I think I'm just going to pass here, again. 
I don't think I really need to cast a castle watcher to miss because if he has any removal, then I'm screwed. I don't want this to be attacking him and getting in for damage. Okay, um, so I'm definitely going to cast Sonic Assault here. I don't think I need to cast a second one. I can definitely push in a lot of damage. So this is going to deal 3 damage. I think I have lethal if I just um, double Sonic Assault him next turn. Because that's 3 damage, right? Yeah, that's 3 damage. So he's going to take... Yeah, it's lethal. Good game. I guess it was the right play to hold up um, Sonic Assault in the hand. Sonic Salt one more time, he's going to be at 3. Alright, good game. This deck is doing, this draft is doing really well. Let's try to get up to um, 3 wins here. Hopefully get our 7 for tonight. And uh, just call it, a, call it a day for this um, Guilds of Ravnica draft. Hopefully the next draft set will be um, either War to Spark or Ravnica Allegiance. Um, I just find that this format is infected with worlds, so... Alright, good keep. Liking Electromancer on 2. Think I might play that first, who knows. Maybe Order of Goblin. Um, in case you have a 1... Well, yeah, I think it's just going to be the Goblin Electromancer. It makes more sense. Especially if I want discounts um, of spells. Oh, God possible. But I think I want to play Murmuring Mystic before that. Whispering Snitch, um, definitely Demir. Uh, so I think I'm just going to play Ornery Goblin, play a land, pass. I wouldn't mind training Ornery Goblin into the 1-3, to be honest. Like, Demir really has a lot of high toughness creatures. So I think I'm going to drop the Murmuring Mystic next turn. Um, and keep up for um, this, and unfortunately I can't have this single stroke at the same time, but I think I need to cast before, beforehand just to get value off of it. Um, that's a really nice pickup. Um, so after this turn, after I resolve Mirror Mystic, it's going to be pretty disgusting, unless he has an answer for it, which I don't think he does. Another Demir Informant. So, let's just say we cast Sonic Assault next turn. I don't think we're going to get him for any damage at all because they have all these blockers. So I might as well just cast Sonic Assault on his turn. Just to create a 1-1 Flyer. Don't Hate the Land um, allows me to cast um, in Skibble Blaze. But I'll still keep it just for Jump Start and um, just in case he has a Burglar Rat. So, let's keep it like this. And step, I'm, I can Sonic Assault tap something down, make a bird. Don't hate it. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna cast it now, tapping down a Demir Informant. Yep. And I might as well just cast it again um, for a jump start. It's just end step, so it's not really. Anything he can do, sorcery speed. Um, yeah, let's just discard a mountain, make another one more flyer. Another land is nice. Um, so what, who can I attack with? I can attack with the flyers. I can attempt to attack with the two ones. I can try to attack in with the goblin electromancer, but losing it would be pretty bad. Um, Arpel takedown's annoying. I think I'm gonna just take some stroke that. Keeping hand for the, um... Okay, so now I can attack with the... With all these cards. Um... 
I think this is a good attack. He's trying to trade off for the 2-1. That's fine. Or he's just going to block the 2-2. That's fine. I just want to deal as much damage. There's nothing that really, um, that really uh, punishes me for having any tapped creatures against Amir. So that card's going to win in inescapable plays. For sure. This is a little bit annoying, but I can't do much about it. I can just win the game with flyers, win the air with flyers, so yeah, in a skippable blaze it is. Move attacks. What would suck if is if he had like ritual of soot or like um fine finality, okay, that's a little bit annoying. But I guess that's okay, because he really needs to surveil. But using on a 1-4 isn't really good. Because he's looking for answers right now. And life gain. I'm definitely going to play the wall out next turn, just so um I can uh, increase the damage amount if I manage to top deck an instant sorcery. And I'm going to keep the land just in case for um, jump start. You can, still, you can still Burglar Rat, but I don't see really any incentive to um, play it. Raw would be an insane top deck right now. Pass Wall Depth, okay, that's not going to do much. He might quasi duplicate for a second Surveil, because he has no way of blocking these flyers. Okay, Dead Weight. Okay, I think I should put Dead Weight a flyer, because this puts him on a two turn clock. He's just going to attack in. There's really no need to... Um, he could have Invert and Vent, but here I think this is the right block. No need to block with Ornery Goblin. One. Opponent is a long way ahead from killing us. Um, I think I'll just Radical Idea now. Trigger, trigger. It's like a draw some cards. Okay, so he's not going to win this. Good game. Murmuring Mystic is busting, is it? Still great in the mirror, but mostly busting, is it? And we got Diamond Rank. Alright, so Sinister Sabotage, pretty good card. Um, two more games, um, let's get to seven. Alright, um, Radical Idea as a cantrip. I do like Rao. Um, so this is a question we'll keep. I can Radical Idea on two. Probably find a creature there, but I like this hand of Rao, so I'm keeping. Definitely playing out the red here. Um, radical Idea end of turn. Hopefully draw into a creature um, and go from there. Okay, Boros Challenger is really scary. Um, let's get our creature going. Okay, that's that's a creature, but it's not the mana cost we're looking for. Uh, I guess we're gonna play the Guild Gate. I can just I can cast Radical Idea in a turn, um, just to um, just to, and, and take out a land. Maybe just jumpstart a land. So um, so I'm gonna take two here. Hopefully um. Next draw steps will just will be better. Definitely not gonna use the combat trick just to prevent two damage. Don't think it's worth it. Hope he doesn't come up with. He, hope he doesn't play Wojek Bodyguard. Pop. That's still very annoying. But I'm. But I, but I think I have to um find a way to deal with this. I 
might have to cast Dazzling Lights in the beginning of his attack phase just to um, prevent the Mentor trigger from happening. Um, let's play land. Um, do I really need to prevent it? I might as well. I mean, I'm going to have how many instants and sorceries? Zero. He's going to move to attacks. Giving it flying. That would suck. So he's going to attack here. He's going to give a mentor trigger on the rock charger. Um, don't know if it's worth it. What am I, I going to draw next turn? That's the thing. Maybe I can take four. Leave it the watcher and miss the block. No, I just wanted to prevent it from, um, yeah, from growing too much. So I'm just going to cast Dowsing Lights on it. Even though this would have been a fine way to trade off a creature, uh, preventing the Mentor this turn could be pretty important. Because if I drop Watcher next turn, I can still use it to um, block. So what's going to happen here? Um, next turn, I'm going to play Watcher and a miss. The turn after, I'm going to have up to six mana. I guess I can play Goblin Electromancer in Disdainful Stroke. It can be clunky in the hand. I mean, I guess I can take Goblin Electromancer first. Or maybe it's just... Yeah, maybe it's just... I don't know. Maybe I just put it in the graveyard. It doesn't seem too relevant here. Um, okay, so I'm going to play that. Maybe play Rao. Rao's going to find me my cards. It's going to give me Disdainful Stroke or something. Um, I think I should just keep these two on top, actually. Yeah, should be fine. Boros doesn't seem to play a lot of four power cre uh, four mana creatures, but it does happen. So he's just gonna do it this turn just to get the mentor. Okay, sure. At least that guy was sure strike. It's a one for one trade. I'm taking four. Next turn is gonna be pretty annoying. I mean, he could still pump the. Um, Pump the uh, Boros Challenger. That's annoying too, but luckily we have a flyer to fend off against it. Um, let's play red, and I definitely am going to cast a Watcher in the Mist here. Don't think I need the Disdainful Stroke now, so I think I'm just going to throw these two. Do I need to land? Hmm. Let's think here. Probably not. Most likely just going to cast Rao next turn. It would suck if he, could, if he had a land because he, he would be able to. So this attack is strange. He definitely has a combat trick. Um, is there any way I'm punish him? Not really. You have to just go for it. So let's just say it's a sure strike or take heart. Maybe take heart would be better. Play around. Um, damn, I hate playing against Boros decks. May I just take it for now? Um. Leave up inescapable blaze in case he decides to do it next turn. Take a crap load of damage. This is just too too strange. I, I have to leave mana up for this. I can't I can't allow him to punch me with a combat trick. Logic bodyguard. I guess now I can block something and then use um, inescapable blaze. On it, um, uh, let's think here. Maybe I, yeah, I'm gonna take a lot of damage here. Oh boy, um, yeah, this is why playing against um, it, Guilds of Ravnica is not a fun um, format sometimes. You just have these Boros decks that just run you over, and he's just gonna mentor into the. Most likely the Boros Challenger, but all I can really do is try to put creatures in front of this. It's going to get blown out by combat tricks. Like you can li literally drop a deck with nothing but combat tricks, and um, and um, I definitely need to cast an escapable blaze on that. 
He's gonna get out of hand if he decides to pump it. So he's gonna attack here. I have. To, I think I'm gonna block the healer's hawk. If he mentors onto the rock charger, I'm. I'm definitely gonna block the Voljek bodyguard. Okay, so I'm gonna block the healer's hawk here. He's gonna have sure strike. That's gonna suck. But what can I do? Jeez. I guess you can just build a deck combat spell, crap creatures, and just win the game. I think I need the only. I think the only answer would be find finality. But unfortunately, um, yeah, that's just gonna do it. Hopefully we can get up to six wins and we don't run into another Boros deck. Don't think in this. I, I don't think Cosmotron Wave would have made too big of a difference either. If we had it um, in our main deck, it only dealt with the Healer's Hawk. It didn't really deal with Boros Challenger on two. So be it. Alright, against a mythic opponent. Hopefully not a Boros player, that's for sure. Um, Nightville Spron 2 is excellent. I think I'm keeping. Right, I can play Electromancer, but it really doesn't accomplish much. All it does is really just give a discount for its like assault. So, I like the Nightville Spron 1 just to get the Surveil going. Just to make sure we hit our land drops consistently. Another Boros player, okay, makes sense. I guess we can trade, um... I guess we can trade, uh, um, Ornery Goblin with Ornery Goblins. Or maybe I can ta take two, and just in case he has a one toughness creature. Um, do I need a second one? Maybe not. So I'm gonna play a land anyways, play Ornery Goblin, say go. And next turn I can play Goblin Electromancer? Yeah, I don't think I need a second one on top. Definitely attacking here, to surveil. Playing land, and I'm fine maybe trading off ordinary goblins here. Voltric Bodyguard's annoying. I might tap it down next turn to the Sonic Assault. Might just be the correct play. And I think I have enough mana to play um, Goblin Electromancer and also. Um, and also um, Sonic Assault. I think I'm attacking here just to offer the. Um, trade here. Um, do I like Command Storms? It works well for 4 mana, and I think it's I think it's what we need. Um, next turn pre-combat, I'm just going to cast an Assault anyways. Pass turn. Like Assault it is. Tap it down. Don't think I'm blocking because I need that extra um, um, discount for four mana to uh, deal with these creatures. Um, so this can be a little bit scary. I could just command a storm to par healing patrol, offer a trade with the Voljek bodyguard, give the allow him to pump the uh, the the um, the ornery goblin. The reason why I would like to do this is because I would like to get a surveil attack off, and I think it's right to just command a storm. Um, I think I'm going to leave behind a 2-1, just so I can trade off with the Bulljack Bodyguard. You can get out of hand. Uh, liking the land on top. How powerful is Rao? Rao has two spells in the graveyard, so I can still mow down the Ornery Goblin if he decides to um, mentor into it. Uh, here, just definitely blocking the Wooldrick Bodyguard. Could have a count, um, a, a spell, but no, guess not. Hopefully nothing here. Um, 
Okay, some of them Star Wars is a little bit annoying. The Morning Goblin as well. Um, you can't really mentor into anything. I guess the whelp is good here. It just blocks the uh, Sun Home Star Wars really well. I guess I'm attacking. Dazzling Lights could be okay. Next turn we're going to play Rao. We might as well grab a land with it and then have Dazzling Lights open. Let's do it. Let's attack here. He might have a combat trick. I think I might take it if he attacks all out. Okay, that's a little bit annoying. He's probably going to use it to buff the Ornery Goblin so it doesn't die to him. Oh, Kite Whelp some. Okay, so let's say 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. How much do I have on the way back? I have 4 in the air. 5, 6. Um, maybe it's fine to block here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. He attacks for 10. I'm, I'm going to be at 5. 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 6 on the way back. I don't think it might... I don't think it's lethal, however. Might need to trade... trade the Hellkite Whelp onto the 3-3. Three, three. Because I'm going to take a lot of damage. Um... Yeah, I think to, I'm, I think I'm allowed this attack to happen like this. So what now? I have two spells in the graveyard. I can take out this. I can take out Ornery Goblin. Offer a trade for the three three. Don't think it's bad. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it. Uh, always nice to get out of the lab. Yeah, this is fine. This is going to hurt. And I think I'm going to pass here. I want to keep Ral here. Just so I can keep plussing with it. He's going to get a free trade off the Nightville Sprite, but I think it's worth it if he decides to attack. If he attacks with Rebel Belt, I might as well just block with the Hellkite Welp. He's attacking here. That's fine. I'm just going to block with the Hellkite Whelp here. Just to get rid of Boar. That's going to be a little bit annoying. But I think I can still tap it down next turn. Um, can't really mine with it. Let's just plus here. Get something. <laughs> Time to choose. Oh, it's so exciting. Red Land's fine. Definitely going to Sonic Assault this... Um, on his turn, leave up man for disdainful stroke. So yeah, um, pre-combat, yeah, definitely going to cast a sonic assault here. Um, yeah, just tap it down. Discard a mountain. I only have one in the graveyard right now, so I mean, he's gonna, he might just attack with the um, Sun Home Stalwart. And um, if he decides to use a combat trick, I think I might as well minus. Like, the minus three is pretty nice, though, next turn, because I can just. Um, I can just take out his Hellkite Whelp. But I might need mana for Disdainful Stroke. So let's think here. Yeah, let's just, let's just Dazzling Lights this. Don't think I need Electromancer. Could use a Lateral Stack Field to block the um, block the Sun Home Star Wars, and that I think that's the correct choice. Block it here. Okay, Blade Instructor is not a 4 drop, so... Uh, let's think here, let's plus... I, I could just minus Ral, take out his Flyer... Trade into his Blade Instructor and leave up an Electrostag field. Maybe that's correct. 
Or I can plus Rao. Yeah, it's plus Rao. Maybe, uh, maybe that's better. Oh, come on. I just want to peek. Watching him the wave is excellence. killing me. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he has any. Um... This is great. Uh, Leaf Frog doesn't look good. Island, don't really need it. Alright. No tax. Definitely going to trade off for the Blade Instructor. Um, Rao's going to take three, but that's fine. The first striker is a little bit annoying because if he pumps it, could have a removal spell. Shit. Um, definitely needs to attack here. Hopefully he doesn't have a pump spell. So I'm definitely going to trade here, block here, block here, take three from um, everything else. Well, that was unpleasant. Hunted Witness is not really something I care too much about. Okay, let's win the game with Rao. Let's keep plussing him, drawing cards. Hmm, decisions, decisions. Escapable Blaze is pretty nice. Um, I think I can keep up a wall, however. Just block the Sun of Stalwart. If he gets rid of it, that could be problematic. Um, I could finish him up. Oh, I could try to win this game with. Um, okay, so this is gonna happen. He's gonna get the Mentor trigger out. I think I'm just gonna block the. I could just let it happen because he's gonna die anyway, so. Fair I this might as well me. inescapable blaze him next turn. If he plays a 4 drop, um, that's pretty nice. Um, Play Lance to go, yeah, let's do it. I do want to keep this Electro Stack field because it's going to pretty much win me the game. Definitely need to block here. And we're gonna cast his people blaze and a turn. Oh well, that kind of sucks. I need to play something, otherwise, um, I need another sorcery instance, or else I'm just gonna lose. Um, hope he doesn't have another combat trick. Let's block the hunted witness. Take a nerd. So it's just gonna be harder cards here. I'm um, hopefully we can get the last king. Ah, <sighs> okay, not the card I want to see. Capture Sphere is not the card I want to see either. Darn. Damn, this game was close. Ah, I just needed one, um, one more trigger from the um, Electro Stack field, and I would have won the game. Ah, very close. I think I could have played this game better, however. Just flashing the Capture Sphere. Very close game. Could have won that. Um, darn. Jeez. Maybe if I bottomed, um, maybe if I surveilled out the um, disdainful stroke and I picked up another sorcery, I could have won. But there you guys go. Um, five and three um, is a deck with Rao. Should have been six or seven, but unfortunately, uh, yep. Maybe I could have played better, but um, sometimes. Uh, the luck is with you or against you. So uh, have a fun day and uh, take care, guys.